As somebody who hadn't watched a WWE show in nearly seven years until this prior Sunday, I feel perfectly capable and honestly fully equipped to tell you what the top five undisputed greatest moments of WrestleMania 40 were. This is 616 Wrestling. What? What do you mean it was on Saturday too? WrestleMania is two days long? Every video here on 616 Entertainment is made possible by my supporters over on Patreon. If you enjoyed the show here today, consider signing up. You'll get early access, exclusive videos, and podcasts, and more. Pro Wrestling Tees has the merch. As always, thank you for watching. Now, I was serious there in that first part. I haven't watched WWE regularly since either 2016 or 2017. I don't really remember. And I can be quoted on this channel as calling the years that followed the worst it has ever, ever been. And I stand by that. Now, obviously, things have changed. The company is no longer under the control of an 80-year-old, egotistical, out-of-touch and wouldn't you know it, that actually makes a huge difference. The production has seen a facelift. The talent has always been there, but now they have a much better platform with which to express themselves. The part I wasn't serious about was the two nights thing. Obviously, I know WrestleMania switched to a two-day event a couple of years ago. I don't know exactly when it happened. Now you're asking too many questions. You can let me know down in the comments, but I don't really care, so it doesn't really make a difference. I did watch the entirety of Night 2 this past Sunday, and I've put a lot of thought into WrestleMania 40 and its many noteworthy moments. So, today I come to you with the official top 5 list of memorable moments. You don't need to go anywhere else. Nobody else is going to have the breakdown like I do. Alright? These are the top 5 moments of WrestleMania 40. Number 5. The Advertisements. If there's one thing WrestleMania never lets you forget, it's that the wrestling on display is not the focus. Is one of the greatest of all time in the ring competing in his 19th WrestleMania? Yes, he is. That's the Viper. That's the legend killer, Randy Orton, brother. And he's fighting a walking, living, breathing advertisement. Drink your Prime, kids. I actually didn't know what Prime was, so... I looked it up, and uh, maybe don't drink Prime, kids. There was a face reveal here on the walking billboard, and, you know, silly me, the longtime wrestling fan in me, assumed that maybe it would be a former opponent from Randy Orton's past. Maybe it would be Logan Paul's idiot brother. But it turned out to be this guy. I texted my buddy Giuseppe, who is this person? And he delivered the information I needed. He said, I don't know. Later on, the phenomenal AJ Styles wrestled LA Knight in a match to determine which wrestler whose first name consists of two letters could take home a box of Slim Jims or something. The entire area surrounding the ring was a Slim Jim commercial. This LA Knight gentleman arrived in a Slim Jim car and gifted some Slim Jim keys to a Slim Jim lady. Like I said, I don't regularly watch WWE, I haven't in years, so I'm not really caught up on who these new wrestlers are or what their names are, but I gotta say, I was taken by the eight-man hardcore tag team match. Now, could the announcers have done a better job explaining which team was Jin and which team was Juice? Absolutely, but that's neither here nor there. Number four greatest moment from WrestleMania 40. WWE really got you to forget that this was not supposed to happen. Cody Rhodes vs. Roman Reigns was the only logical main event for this year's WrestleMania. So obviously, in true WWE fashion, they pivoted at the last second to Roman Reigns vs. The Rock. Now, is that a match that fans have been dying to see for the better part of a decade? Absolutely. And they finally booked it on the only show where it could possibly be shit on. So at the last possible millisecond, WWE decided to pivot on their pivot and revert back to the original logic of Cody Rhodes versus Roman Reigns 2. Stupid? Yes. Avoidable? Absolutely. But the build was intense, The Rock started saying bad words, and he took the world by storm. 
The Rock, Cody, and Roman were very gracious in allowing Seth Rollins to get involved for some reason. Look, what I'm trying to say is the distractions were fantastic in getting back in line with the original plan. And thank God they went back to the original plan because if they did do Rock versus Roman, then we probably see Cody Rhodes take on CM Punk in some sort of advertisement match, you know, a Coke versus Pepsi drinking contest because Punk's arm injury would have prevented a match and Cody would have had an unfair advantage in the Super Sipsky department. Nobody wants to see that. Number three, greatest moment from WrestleMania 40. This photo of The Rock where it looks like he sneezed on Seth Rollins. Number two, greatest moment from WrestleMania 40 was finding out Snoop Dogg is the WWE Champion. When you stop watching for as long as I did, there are a number of things that just go under the radar. You know, I have always been obsessed with championship belts. For as long as I've enjoyed the show, I've enjoyed the title belts. I don't know why, I can't explain it. But for all of this to get past me is kind of crazy. You know, I pay attention to the belts even if I'm not watching. I remember when the new Raw belt showed up and it looked like a bedazzled fruit roll-up. I remember when the new World Tag Team titles looked like pennies, which is fitting because the entire division was worth about a cent. But a famous person winning the WWE Championship, let alone an iconic rapper who debuts a new belt that looks like one of Willy Wonka's golden tickets blown up in size. Man, talk about being out of the loop. And I'm glad The Rock is a champion again, too. Look, I don't know what this belt is for or how you win it, but based on design alone, I'm going to assume it's the Rodeo World Championship. And if The Rock can dodge bowls the way he ducks responsibility when it comes to failures in his career, then I don't think anyone's going to be able to take that thing away from him. And the number one greatest moment from WrestleMania 40 was when the legend showed up and it felt like your uncle surprising you on your birthday. I remember when John Cena was the man. His run on top was unlike anything we had ever seen before. And eventually he won so often and turned away so many up and coming guys that we just kind of couldn't wait for him to go away. But now it's different. When John Cena shows up to rescue this generation's new man, it feels special. Sure, he doesn't rap anymore. He doesn't wear the gold boots, G-string, and afro wig these days, but it's still special. He's the only guy on the card who's lost more hair than I have, but he doesn't paint his head like any of these other f***ing jokers, because he's John Cena, and old man John Cena is f***ing awesome. The Undertaker's theme music hitting made that crowd erupt like a volcano, and he's also not wearing his old gear anymore. As a matter of fact, he kind of reminds you of that older guy at the family function who you're not really sure what relation he has to anyone. He kind of throws around racial slurs sometimes and genuinely laughs at I did that stickers on gas pumps, but you still remember when he used to do cool shit with his lighter and blow smoke rings with his cigarettes for you and your friends when you were kids? He's a wild card. You know that one real conversation with him where you actually hear his views on the world might affect the way that you perceive him, so you never let the conversation get beyond the point of catching up but it's still nice to see him all the same. And those are the top five greatest moments from WrestleMania 40. With another mania in the books, it's always important to look back on the memories that we've made, and maybe it's even more important to look forward to the memories that have yet to be made. Look at this photo of Karrion Cross talking to Bubba Ray Dudley. If you didn't know who these guys were, you'd think Bubba had never seen wrestling before in his life, and despite trying his hardest to digest what Cross is saying, he has no f***ing idea what's going on. There, we just made one new memory. Thank you for watching 616 Wrestling. I actually threw this episode together last second, so the episode you were supposed to see today, you'll get next week. It's a doozy and was instantly demonetized even after four different attempts to clean it up, so I could really use you over on Patreon. Thank you for watching, thank you for supporting me, and I'll see you next week.